it's well known that uh, IBM, International Business Machines, was formed in 1911 by a man called Charles Randlett Flint and was called originally the Computing Tabulating Recording Company. Uh, the name was changed uh, by Thomas Watson Sr. in 1925 to the name we use today, International Business Machines. Um, so CTR, the Computing Tabulating Recording Company, was made of those three companies. Um, but in 1933, IBM bought the Electromatic Typewriter Company. Um, Electromatic made electric typewriters, of which this is, a, this is a, a version. This is not an early one. This one dates from 1959. But basically, there is an electric motor driving a big rubber roller which powers these type bars up so that there is a consistent strike on the paper. In the 1940s, IBM uh, refined this idea, and instead of having a, a typewriter where every character takes the same amount of space on the page, that is to say one-tenth of an inch or one-twelfth of an inch wide, IBM came up in the 1940s with the executive typewriter, and this is an executive version of this Model C, which is here. The difference is that a lowercase letter I on this machine takes up two units of space and an uppercase letter M takes up five units of space. That is to say it's proportionally spaced. You'll notice that nearly all modern um, fonts that are used on computers are proportionally spaced. And the reason for this is that human beings find it easier to read proportionally spaced uh, machines. Print. So, in, in, 90, in the 1940s, IBM had the, uh, the Model A typewriters, and then in the 1950s, the Model Bs. Unfortunately, we don't have a Model A or a Model B in the museum. Uh, it would be nice if we had uh, one or more, or even an Electromatic, which are the forerunners of the IBM-branded ones. Um, we do have these. These are both Model Cs. That's a standard, non-proportionally spaced, and an executive, proportionally spaced, dating from 1959. The last of IBM's type bar based machines was the Model D in 1967. And as you can see, it is very, very similar to the Model C, but cleaned up, nicer industrial design, and they were, they were actually a little bit more reliable as well. And once again, we have one of each. We've got a Model D standard, and we've got a Model D executive. In 1961, IBM came up with the golf ball typewriter, where instead of having these type bars, we have a single print head like this, which has the 88 characters on. The advantage of a golf ball is that you can't clash keys, so you can go very, very much faster. Now, although electromatic typewriters had been used as input-output devices for IBM computers for many years, in fact, in the museum, we've got an IBM 705 console with an electromatic typewriter on it with type bars. The golf ball lends itself much more readily to being driven electronically. This is not an early golf ball. This is actually the biggest selling golf ball, the so-called Selectric 2. Um, and the Selectric 2 also came in a correcting version, whereby it has an ordinary tape and a correcting tape. By pressing the correcting key, the golf ball typewriter has a memory, a mechanical memory. It goes back one space, prints that character again, but this time it lifts this correcting tape in front and takes the character off the page. So 61, 1961 came the golf ball, 1971 came the Selectric 2, 1973 the correcting Selectric 2. Uh, two. The final Selectric was the Selectric 3 in 1980. IBM took the opportunity to produce a larger number of keys on the Selectric 3s. There are 96 characters instead of 88. Later on, IBM moved off the golf ball principle on onto the daisy wheel principle. And this, as you can see, has got a spinning wheel here and a hammer that pushes 
against the spinning wheel. These were the last of the IBM typewriters. Making use of the Golf Ball, however, IBM in, in 1964 produced the world's first word processor. It was called the Magnetic Tape Selectric Typewriter. Unfortunately, we don't have one. We do have a tape. So every time a key was pressed, a character was, was, was uh, recorded on the tape, and later you could play it back. You could also, if you had a two-station uh, tape drive, you could make corrections. So this was a very, very powerful way of, of producing type, and it used a golf ball typewriter. In 1973, um, I beg your pardon, in 1971, IBM came out with the magnetic card selectric typewriter, and we're now using a card to um, keep the data on. And each card represents a page of data. This is not a, this is not, uh, a mag card typewriter, this is a mag card 2. Um, the difference between a mag card typewriter and a mag card 2 is essentially we're now using this just for offline storage and we're actually working with an 8 kilobyte memory inside the box and this dates from 1973. This was a highly successful line of IBM products. The magnetic card was also used to produce input for the IBM 6640 inkjet printer and the IBM 6670 laser printer. A later development of the golf ball was the IBM Selectric Composer. The Selectric Composer, purely mechanically, um, can do ragged write or justified write or centered text. It uses the golf ball system and once again it uses proportional spacing and it has three different sizes of proportional spacing. The whole thing is done purely mechanically. However, later on, in 1978, the base mechanism was used, but now the mechanics were replaced by electronics. And so the proportional spacing was done electronically, the ragged right justified right, centred, all done electronically. And once again, we store the data on a magnetic card, which we record on this console. IBM was very successful with standalone word processing. It had three sets of um, word processing equipment. One lot provided by Office Products Division, another lot provided by the General Systems Division and another lot divided, uh, provided by uh, Data Processing Division. Um, the latter one, parts of which were produced here at Hursley. IBM's last dedicated word processing system was Display Writer. It was announced in June 1980. It is powered by an Intel 8086 processor and can have up to 224 kilobytes of storage. Um, it has a two-drive diskette drive using these enormous, by modern standards, 8-inch floppy disks. Generally speaking, on a two-station system like this, we'd have the, the program code here, and we keep the data here. It was a highly successful system, and it drove this printer, which is the IBM 5218, announced at the same time. Once again, you can see it's a daisy wheel printer. This, um, this enormous Heath Robinson looking device here is the paper feed. It has two trays for paper and one tray for envelopes. This was really the end of IBM word processing, the display writer system because it was taken over just a couple of years later by the IBM personal computer running word processing software. The division, Office Products Division, was itself um, spun off by IBM in 1980. It still makes printers today and it's called Lexmark.